Welcome back to my channel, and as always, thanks to my subscribers. I am in the process of modeling the brake system on a tank car, the only freight car on which the brake system components are visible. To keep that project video shorter, I decided to produce this video, which will explain the brake system used on modern freight cars. The brake system on trains is primarily pneumatic. Air pressure to the brake cylinder applies the brakes, and releasing that pressure releases the brakes. The problem is this. How do you prevent a runaway train when the air system fails? That problem was solved by George Westinghouse in 1869. Here is the underbody of my current tank car project, showing the AB brake system used by all freight cars built after 1933. The AB brake system consists of an air reservoir, an AB valve, and a brake cylinder, all connected by compressed air piping. This is the train line, also called the main air line. It runs from one end of the car to the other, and each car is connected to the next by hoses. The magnetic coupler pins are curved to mimic the air hoses connecting the cars. There is one connection to the train line on every car. This connection feeds into the AB valve. The heart of the brake system is the AB valve, which is also called the triple valve. This valve controls airflow from the train line into the system, and it also controls airflow from the air reservoir to the brake cylinder. The air reservoir contains two separate chambers, the service reservoir and the emergency reservoir. If the air pressure in the train line is higher than the pressure in the service reservoir, the AB valve does two things. First, it opens the line between the train line and the service cylinder, allowing the service cylinder to recharge. And second, it vents the air feed to the brake cylinder, releasing the brake. If the air pressure in the train line falls below the pressure in the service reservoir, the AB valve closes the brake cylinder vent, it closes the connection between the train line and the service cylinder, and it opens the line between the service cylinder and the brake cylinder. This supplies the brakes, slowing the car. This allows the engineer to apply brakes by reducing the air pressure in the train line. Even though the train line pressure is falling, the braking action is supplied by the service reservoir, not the train line. The problem with this system is that the brakes are always either on, with pressure provided by the service reservoir, or off because the brake cylinder is vented through the AB valve. This can cause problems on long downhill grades, especially steep grades. Repeated short applications of the brakes will exhaust the pressure in the service reservoirs because there is insufficient time to recharge the reservoirs between brake applications. This leads to loss of braking action. The problem is solved by the use of a retainer valve. This is a valve mounted on the brake cylinder vent line, and it is designed to retain a specified pressure on the brake cylinder. The valve usually has three positions, EX for exhaust, LP for low pressure, and HP for high pressure. By manually setting some of the retainer valves, the brake man can force some of the cars to have their brakes applied constantly. This will retard the train on the downhill grades. Once the train reaches the bottom of the grade, the train will stop and the brake man will set all the retainer valves to EX, releasing all of the brakes. All railroads provide operating rules dictating how many retainer valves should be set based on train length and grade percentage. The retainer valve is usually mounted alongside the brake wheel on freight cars. I have not modeled the connection from the AB valve to the retainer valve, but the inset shows a cast-on retainer valve just left of the brake wheel. Dynamic brake systems on modern diesel-electric locomotives have reduced, but not eliminated, the reliance on retainer valves to applied controlled braking on long downhill grades. The AAR still requires retainer valves on cars in interchange service. Air from the emergency reservoir is applied to the brake cylinder if the AB valve senses rapidly falling train line pressure, caused either by an air system failure or by an emergency brake application by the engineer. Now for the mechanical side. 
When air pressure increases in the brake cylinder, the clevis pin extends and rotates the brake lever. The brake lever is linked to the floating lever, and the floating lever rotates at the same time. The two levers pull the brake rods away from the trucks. When the brake rods are pulled away from the trucks, the wheel brakes are engaged. There are brake shoes on all four wheels, and this causes the car to slow down and stop. There is a mechanical connection between the brake wheel and the brake lever, which I have not modeled. The brake rod from the brake wheel attaches to the outboard end of the brake lever. Applying the brake wheel pulls the brake lever toward the B end of the car, engaging the brakes without any assistance from the air system. Passenger car brake systems work the same way but with one exception. Passenger cars are equipped with one or more manually operated emergency brake levers. Pulling an emergency brake lever vents the connection in the AB valve and immediately applies pressure from the emergency reservoir to the brake cylinder. As always, I would love to hear your comments and questions. If you want to see more videos, please be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.